Let's talk about a VFD's power flow process really quickly. So to start off with, the first thing we're going to come into after our line filter is going to be our SCRs. These SCRs give us our DC current. From there, we feed out into our DC bus assembly. Now that's going to be a negative DC bus and a positive DC bus on either side of the system. And the same basic layout is going to be true for any, any drive assembly, whether this is a serviceable drive like what I'm showing you here, or whether it's a disposable like a, a VLT by Danfoss or a 550, 580 series by ABB. Those are disposable drives. They're not meant to be serviced or worked on, but the same components and flow and process, all that is happening internally. So our DC bus flows into our capacitor bank which is on this particular drives on the back side of the drive back here now there was a plate that sits over the top of these capacitors that connects them all together but the buses are kept insulated from each other they're not allowed to touch or interact in any way that would be just considered a direct short on the dc side from that dc bus and the capacitors we have a much cleaner more stable uh, dc volts feeding into our igbt's these igbt's aka inverters they take that DC current and they create a PWM, a pulse width modulated voltage output that our motor can then use and act like a regular AC sine wave. And our filtering and our ability to create a pure and proper sine wave has really improved over the years. Anyway, that is your basic power cycle. SCRs to the, to the DC bus, DC bus to the capacitor bank, the capacitor bank helps clean up that DC current and gives it a more smooth and stable operation, which then we can feed that into our IGBTs. Those IGBTs convert it into a pulse width modulated AC sign, which is just an artificial uh, sine wave. It's not a, a natural sine wave like what the grid would have, even though we have a proper grid sign feeding into our SCRs. And then the path just kind of continues to cycle from there. That is your basic layout. This is going to be true for any drive assembly, whether you can see all these components and follow it through or not, or service it, it's not relevant. This is a basic drive design and how these things are assembled together. Just all the manufacturers have slightly different flavors on how they want to make it look and to what scale and size can they make it operate at. I would, will make one quick point that on some of the newest assemblies I'm starting to see come out, those SCRs are actually starting to be uh, IGBTs on the input side. And so uh, there's possibly a chance where as the industry has moved forward, we start seeing IGBTs get implemented as SCRs to rectify the, uh, the, the AC current coming in into a DC. And then we use another IGBT on the leaving side to invert it back into an AC uh, uh, sine wave. So just something to be aware of. You might start seeing that type of technology implemented in the newest of systems. But for the most part, a lot of them are still using SCRs and then an IGBT on the output side of it. I'm Holden Scherenberger with Chiller Academy and HVAC Time. This is just Chiller Fundamentals. These are things we have to understand and know. And this is exactly what I teach you in, I, in the Introduction to Chiller's course at chilleracademy.com. I really think it could help you with that MTT. Make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I really appreciate you.